A mini PC with LCD screen, crazy low power consumption and desktop grade performance on a budget. It is now well possible thanks to Ace Magic's S1. Is it really a good one? Let's inspect! Hey everybody, welcome to the channel, great to meet you. I'm Michael the Tech Mishka and today we talk about Mini computers, something I used to carry with me on pretty much every vacation because of the scale, but now we're switching to Mini ITX. I can easily get my video editing station with me, but when it comes to size, scale, of course price, those mini computers are extremely tempting, especially given the performance that they get in the past few months. So this one comes from a company called Ace Magic. It's called the S1, and I think we can agree that it looks like a desktop computer with much smaller size. So our task today to thoroughly test it, do a bunch of tests for gaming, office tasks, multimedia, basically everything that is relevant to the Ace Magic S1. The price is in fact not that attractive, at least given just the specs. But we know that the whole package is not only about the specs. Being between $250 and $350, this might be a very good deal, because if you start building a desktop PC by yourself, just buying the CPU may cost as much. Ace Magic are rather a new brand, and they need to compete against well-established product lines by companies such as B-Link, Morphine, Gigabyte and many others. Unpacking, well, expecting a cool LED display, and I was quite eager to check what is on the inside, the outside is well-utilized marketing space, Opening it, and quite a good job actually. A well-built mini computer, a plastic frame, which is fine since the weight and the size are a priority. There are a lot of ports available, seeing two LAN ports is a very good sign. While perhaps most people wouldn't really care, this is immediately an interesting device for everyone who needs a small computer for a home file server or a firewall. You just need to flash a proper operating system. There also is a magnetic stand to be used for making Ace Magic's S1 look like a true desktop computer in a small scale. I guess being filmed from the right angle, it can really trick you that it is a big desktop computer. Well, it's not. We're going to explore how this different form factor is going to affect the overall performance and heat dissipation, and before going for our usual checks, such as repairability and upgradability, let me satisfy your hunger for getting to know the tech specs. Intel Alder Lake N95 or N97 is what it has as a CPU, 8 or 16 GB of RAM, up to 1 TB storage, Intel UHD graphics inside, 2 LAN ports, support for up to 2 monitors, the mini PC is equipped with Bluetooth, has a Wi-Fi 6 module, and even a pre-installed operating system, which in this case is Windows 11 Pro. If you know something about PC hardware, then most likely you can relate these specifications to laptop-grade computers, because essentially this PC is built around a laptop-grade platform. Uh, Intel's Alder Lake N95 and N97, which are the two options for this mini PC, are both targeted at very balanced operation and very low power consumption. We talk about TDP of 12 or 15 watts, depending on the exact type of the CPU which is ridiculously small amount, not very cooling demanding, and it's just a fraction of what more powerful i5s or i7s are going to demand. Uh, this here is a transparent part, you can actually see the single dim. Unfortunately DDR4 over here, I say unfortunately because they could have used the DDR5 module with a different system board of course, and probably that's a good idea for a pro variation or something. And uh, since we talk about components, yes, it's time to do a bunch of tests. But prior to that, and given the size, I'm fairly sure you're curious about repairability and possible upgrades. In fact, maintenance and upgrades not only are possible, but they are surprisingly easy. It's the first mini PC where I see such a user-friendly way for accessing the internals. Just a single DIMM slot, meaning no dual channel setup is possible, a B-Win made flash drive, which you could replace, the wireless network chip is by Realtek, which is in my opinion a good choice, and supports Wi-Fi 6. Access to the CPU is not easily possible, but you can at least service the RAM, the storage and the fan in case needed. So repairability is possible for some of the components. If you get a CPU or system board failure, you better buy a new mini PC. And sadly, no SATA HDD expansion slot over here. 
So now, testing. The availability of the LED display on the front kind of makes it not necessary to measure the wattage. Or actually, let's see the values in parallel, because there of course is some power utilized by other hardware components. Regardless the measurement approach, this is a ridiculously low amount of power, just a fraction of what a desktop PC would consume, which is, at the end of the day, the goal for this processor line by Intel. Parsing it through a number of office tasks shows promising results. Everything reacts quickly, no signs of stuttering or slowdown, regardless of the resolution. In 4K, it can go as high as 60Hz and you can achieve higher refresh rates in 1080p. Web browsing is a delight, as long as you use the right browser and you access a properly optimized website, which is not related to the PC at all. Multimedia server is also a great use case. If you want the PC just for watching movies and streamed media, then yeah, that's a perfect match. YouTube won't skip any frames and remain stable all the time. Network connectivity also shines, a Realtek chip delivering excellent wireless performance and two gigabit LAN ports, which are gonna let you run the system as a home firewall or server. The synthetic benchmarks show nothing unexpected. One of the popular rendering tools, Cinebench, shows performance on par with the capability of the N95 processor. Do not forget that this one is extremely power efficient and even at its maximum load is gonna consume very limited amount of power. Less wattage usually converts into less heat, so a rather quiet fan. This is as loud as it can go. The amount of RAM on my unit also seems to be sufficient. You know that Windows is smart enough to well handle the physical amount of memory, and in case more is needed, it would go for a larger swap file. I remind you about the fact that here we have only a single DDR4 DIMM, therefore only single-channel RAM mode, and this is relevant to the rate at which the data is transferred between the processor and the memory. If you're curious about the storage performance, so was I, by the way, under sustained loads, this drive performs really good. Clearly, it's not among the fastest SSDs out there, but definitely better than the entry-level QLC-based drives. Most of the tests are stressing the drive for short periods of time. This is why I'm copying more than 100 gigabytes. This really is gonna show you how it performs in the long run and which are the lowest rates to expect. Given the price point, what we see here is very good and you can of course go for a larger and better NVMe. Just reminding you that a high-end piece of storage is likely gonna cost more than the Ace Magic S1 itself. Games can also run fine. That's right, you can play even some current titles, but for a bunch of them you may have to settle with lower frame rates and lower resolution. For instance, CS2 is not at all playable in 4K, but it can be okay-ish in 1080p if you reduce the graphics details, of course. Most racing games are gonna run fine as well, so I guess you're mostly limited about FPS shooters and games where graphics is the key focus area. In the end of the day, this is not a platform optimized towards gamers, therefore think of it as a bonus. What for sure is super stable is the MAME arcade emulator. Most 90s kids would know what I'm talking about. Additionally, you could customize the front LEDs to set the mood right and it can show a good amount of information on top. Windows Defender may think the LED control executable is the popular Trojan Blada Bindi though, might be a false positive and in my case I didn't experience it but found other users who reported it on Reddit. Speaking of the software, Windows 11 Pro, which as usual is a pleasure to use, licensed with all the bells and whistles, updates are coming in on time and looks like this mini PC handles the operating system in a pretty good way, drivers are stable, there have been no hiccups or whatsoever. So before the verdict, if we think in direction improvements and perfection, I'd put on the list the single-channel RAM mode, which is on top DDR4 based, the lack of Thunderbolt support, the lack of a Type-C connectivity port and the not-too-stable bases. In the end, I believe the Ace Magic S1 kind of accomplishes all the goals that it is supposed to. Uh, very compact size, uh, very lightweight, pretty good price and apparently it has decent performance for what it's worth. Uh, if I think of one more drawback, perhaps if you use too many USB devices which involve cables, given the lightweight construction, you know, it can easily fall down, so 
just be careful if that is being used on a desk. But other than that, I can certainly recommend it. It's pretty fun to use and this LED display on the front makes things a lot more interesting and very informative at the same time. And I'm curious to hear about your opinion. Are you ready to give 50 more bucks and get a DDR5-based setup? Or you're pretty happy with a lower price and the DDR4 performance shown over here? Let me know in the comment section below the video where you can also share your opinion about this mini computer, especially if you already have some experience with it because you own it. Well, that's been everything about this episode. Thank you very much for watching it. I'm Michael the Tech Mishka and it would be really fantastic to see you again. Therefore, subscribe to the channel. See you soon. Bye.